Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today we're doing another repurchase or not nah here on my channel, which is, I don't know, a series <laughs> of videos here on my channel and has been on other uh, YouTube platforms in which we go through our collection, randomly choose out 10 or so different palettes and talk about those palettes and tell you whether we would repurchase them today or not nah, if they uh, came into the beauty space today. Supposedly based on just what you don't know about the palette, but I usually talk to you about also what I do know about the palette because I think that that is why I choose to repurchase or not nah <laughs> a certain palette. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I do, do just have 10 palettes to go over with you today. Palette content is kind of my favorite kind of content here. So there's that. For those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I'm a lover of all things high and colorful beauty and self-care. I also work as a field leader for Ulta Beauty, so I get a lot of education in my position. I like to bring you that education here, but ultimately I'm just out here talking about makeup because I like to talk about makeup and... It brings my heart joy and I hope that it brings your heart joy too. And if it does, I hope that you find that you like it here and that you'll want to subscribe before you go. But with all that said and done, let's jump into this video where we just talk about some makeup, shall we? Purchase or not time. And I have 10 different palettes to go over with you that were randomly chosen for me. My Spreadsheet is very confusing, honestly. Otherwise, I would absolutely show it here. But I have all of my palettes in a spreadsheet, and then I randomly choose several different numbers, and I just pick from those numbers the palettes that I am able to choose from. Sometimes those numbers populate with a palette that I've already went over with you in this. I think that there might be one that I already did before, but maybe didn't get it like blocked out as one that I had done. I don't know, you'll have to tell me when when the video is done or in the comment section, whichever. But with that said, these are always just super fun and we just talk about, you know, these palettes. So let's jump in. The first one I have for you is the one that I think I maybe have gone over with you before. Or maybe it's just one that I've talked about ad nauseum on my channel, but that is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold. So I'm not a Too Faced lover and too Faced is not a brand that I typically go for ever. And also knowing what I know about the formulations of Too Faced. Listen, when this palette first came out, I remember it being the Indol Speak All for Shimmers. Now, the shimmers in here are nice. I think that they're decent shimmers. They're really firmly pressed. They are pretty impactful in an eye look. I just don't any longer think that these are, oh, holy cow, right? I just no longer think that these are the best shimmers out there. And when I think about that and my desire to even side eye Too Faced, I would have to say that this is probably not a palette that I would pick up today. With that said, I do think that this is a really great palette. I mean, you just, this palette is so old, you guys, and this is how the shimmers are still performing in this palette. There's very, very little chocolate scent left to this palette, but there's no like discoloration or like, I don't know, weird things growing or anything like that in this palette. And it still obviously performs so, so well. So while I probably would not pick this palette up today, this is a palette that I am happy that it exists in my collection. It's a, number one, it's a piece of history in my humble opinion to make up in the makeup space and what was good versus what is good now, right? We've had, we have so many indie shadows now that those shimmers that I just showed you are maybe laughable, but honestly, that was the stuff back in the day and I'm really happy that I actually jumped on that bandwagon and grabbed that palette but I would not pick it up today. 
Uh, also chosen for me was the Melt Muerte palette. And if you guys know anything about me, you probably know this story. But this was a set and I thought mm, I should bring in both of them because you can't talk about one without talking about the other. But we're going to talk about one without talking about the other. This was a set of palettes from Melt that they come together. One is a like dark moody side. I think it, it was to represent life and death and it was like their holiday-esque seasonal set of palettes for the year many many moons ago i think maybe 2019 i want to say was the year so this is a pretty old palette in my collection but it had like a beautiful like summer-esque color story and a beautiful summer-esque like sugar skull on one palette and then this one was the one and they were the secondary one to it and it was Muerte and Vida are the names of the palettes and when you brought them together they were a full sugar skull two different sides of that full sugar skull and this is just one side of that. This is a color story that is scary for most people and um, was also scary for me at the time, but I could not get past this packaging. Like I wanted this so bad, but it was also at a time and place in my life where I wasn't spending $60 on a palette, let alone, I think it was a hundred and $150 or $190 for the, the whole set. And I wanted the whole set. I missed out on it and when a friend of mine uh, she makes fun of me because I still talk about this today but a friend of mine was at a beauty show and they were there and they were selling the Melt Morte and Vita set and pieces of the set and I, she rang me up and she's like do you still want this I said absolutely she said what pieces I told her what pieces that I absolutely couldn't live without and she bought them for me and I sent her the money and it was part of their Amore Eterno collection and I have both of the palettes and the highlighter to this collection. Would I repurchase this palette today? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yes. I think that this just speaks volumes to what I like to do with the artistry of my eye looks this brings me so much joy to look at it also brings me so much joy to play with it is dark and moody and unexpected for a lady of my age to be putting on her eyes but i just don't give two poops about what anybody thinks about my eye makeup if i'm honest with you i mean look at what i'm wearing today which is also a, a melt palette they just do something to spark my creativity and while this is maybe not the best formula, to be honest, I love playing with this palette. So would I repurchase this palette today if it came out today? Yes, because I think I'm still in a place where I don't really care how bad Melt's formula is. They have, it's inconsistent is what it is, but I don't care. How inconsistent it is I don't care if it's bad or good I can figure out how to work with almost everything that they put out I have one melt palette that I have decluttered and I feel like some sort of way about having decluttered it it's a palette that I struggle with a lot not just because of the color story but because its formula is just not good but that one I had a really good time with I always have have a really good time with in it it really brings my heart joy to pull it out and play with it. The next one was the Natasha Denona Zendo. And you know, I have to be honest with you, this is not my favorite Natasha Denona palette. I think mostly because it's just so it, meh. Like you have your warm tones over here and you have some cool tones over here, but the cool tones look like they're just kind of second thoughts and kind of thrown into the palette they don't make much sense to the palette in my humble opinion uh, I do think it performs very well I just don't love the color story of this palette because I am the person that I am I know that I would repurchase this palette but if I was an everyday consumer and 
didn't know anything about this brand and didn't know anything about this palette, I don't think that I would purchase this palette because it's just not a color story that interests me right now. And again, like I said, I feel like these, these four shades up here are shades that were just kind of the token blue in the palette. Remember back in the day when there was like, you'd have warm tone palettes with a pop of blue or warm tone palettes with a pop of green or warm tone palettes with a pop of purple. That is what this palette reminds me of, to be honest. And I don't think that I would repurchase it if I was a regular consumer. Knowing who I am, and the stan I am for Natasha Denona, I know that I would purchase this palette again today if it was launching, but I would side eye it. Much like I am with the gold palette, you guys, like I will probably purchase that palette, but I don't understand why we needed another gold palette when we could have just made the actual gold palette a midi and not taken all the teals out of it, not really created a whole new thing for the gold. I understand where, what she's doing, where she's going with it, but I also think that it's a palette we don't need. This is a palette that we don't need. The next one is the Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette, and I think I've talked about this recently, actually, maybe very recently, I have a top three in every category palette edition. Um, which you guys, I have top three in every category that I have in my beauty collection on my channel now. I really appreciate all of the likes and views on those videos. They didn't get a whole lot of watch time, but like I had fun filming them either way. But this one is in my palette edition one as one of my top three like mini palettes, mostly because this isn't a palette that I would wear every single day. But it is a palette that has come in handy for me when blending out any eyeshadow that I have or just putting a little bit of a pop of color into any eye look without it being obscene or obtrusive or like taking over the eye look. And these are like pastels without that white base. So they go on really nicely and they're not chalky at all. I really quite love this palette. And if it were to launch today, I still think that this is a palette that I would want to pick up for that reason alone. It's all mattes and it's all really beautiful, like vivid pastel -y shades. I don't love pastels, but I do love that this is all mattes and specifically love the fact that I know I use it today for blending out the more vivid, like deeper tones in my eyeshadow palette collection. And I think I would still look at this in that way if it were to populate today. When I picked it up, I was going through some kind of phase on like, I need to be a pastel lover. And I just didn't love it for that reason, but it does serve a big purpose in my collection these days in blending out anything I need to blend out with a um, really nice, sweet, blendable, pigmented pastel color. So I do think that I would probably pick that up again today. For this one, this is the ABH Norvina Collection Mini Pro Pigment Palette Volume 1. This I think I would pick up today as well. It's just a really beautiful color story. Now there are others of these minis that I don't think I would pick up today if you paid me to. Um, but this one I think is one of the color stories that I absolutely would. I think it is so beautiful. I love the purples and the pinks. Those are like some of my most favorite colors to wear on my eyes as well as like oranges and with this like crazy pop of orange in here and this beautiful shimmer that goes with it. I think I would look at this in the store and be like, yep, I have to have it. So I definitely think I would pick this up again today. I especially love that it's got pinks, purples, and oranges in here and it's all very cohesive with each other. Like they all look like they could form one eye look even though there's nine different shades in here. I just really love me a nine pound eyeshadow palette that like speaks to my soul. soul. I just totally threw that across the room. I hope it did not break. Um, I love that palette. I'm gonna go check on that real quick. Apparently it is also mostly indestructible. We do have a little bit of like this, sh this middle shade 
that broke off and is kind of all over the place. But for the most part, the palette is in one piece. Look at that. So excited because that truly just flew across the room. So yeah, I would definitely pick that one up again. It also picked for me the Urban Decay Electric palette. And if you guys know anything about my channel, you know that this is a hugely nostalgic palette for me. And if you look at my eyes, you might be able to tell the answer. Like these colors just bring my heart so much joy and really spark the creativity in my mind. And I wish that Urban Decay would put this palette out again. Not Wired, not that palette, but this palette. I wish they would put this out again because this is so old in my collection. I should probably, these two palettes actually should probably go in my memory box and not be used on my eyes ever again. Um, but I, it's got like a grip on me. It really does. So while I probably will never put this on my eyeballs again, if Urban Decay came out with this palette again today, I would repurchase this palette. 100%. Okay, the next one I have is the Ace Beauté Paradise Fallen. And this is what this palette looks like. I got this in a FabFitFun, I do believe, or maybe a FabFitFun edit sale. Maybe I purchased it in a FabFitFun edit sale. This is the old Ace Beauté formulation. I don't know what their new one feels like or, you know, how it performs. I do know that I've heard from friends of mine on this space that it's not much different than the old one. And I don't have any problems with the old formula. However, this palette is, and I say this thinking through the lens of also this palette, but this palette has a, a large amount of depth, but also a large amount of like light to it. This palette, I think that I would talk myself out of today if I were to see it you know, as a today launch. And the biggest reason why is because it's purple and gray. And while I love purples on my eyes, these are really, really dark purples. And even the shimmers in this are really, really dark shimmers. And I just, I like a little bit more light or a little bit more variance to the shades than what I think that this presents right off the bat and beans is that it is an indie brand that you can't get in a store like I wouldn't have any option to look and feel and touch the palette and I believe that the only reason why I purchased it is because they had the whole like paradise collection on the FabFitFun edit sale I was getting one in my FabFitFun and I purchased the other ones from that edit sale now, I love their formulation. I think that Ace Beauté has a really great formula, even the old formula, but I just think that this palette maybe would be too dark for me to appreciate what I know to be true about the palette because I have used the palette. So I definitely think that this is probably a palette that I would pass on if it were to launch today. Uh, now this one, the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox is actually a palette that I feel like would be right up my alley today as crazy as that sounds. I picked this up on a whim because I was, I think, wanting to do like a full face of drugstore or something like that. And this was a palette that interests me, but it wasn't a palette that interests me enough to pick it up when it first launched because I wasn't into these colors. But now I am, I do a lot more of just a one and done or a neutral eye look most days. And this is a really, really perfect palette for that. So I definitely think that if this was and it's still available. It's still a palette that you can pick up at any old whim. Um, I do think that if they launch this palette today, I would side eye it and I'd probably want to pick it up at launch or like shortly after launch. Whereas I think when it launched, I waited a full year, I believe, to pick it up because it just wasn't my cup of tea at the time. But this is definitely a palette that um, serves a really, a really great purpose in my collection. It's not one of my favorites. It's not one that I would like go after but I could see myself side eyeing it and picking it up today. Then there's this one. This is the Juvia's Place Wahala palette. Um Wahala 2. And I picked this up 
because it was so beautiful, but I also didn't need it. And it's also mostly blue. While I love a blue eyeshadow on my eyes, I do not need a mostly blue eyeshadow palette. I also feel like this doesn't like speak to each other very well. And I also know that there are three different shades in this palette that I won't even use because they're pressed glitters. And I just know enough about myself these days and knew enough honestly about myself when I picked this up that I wasn't going to use those three shades. I do think that this blends well. I think that this is beautiful. I have used it maybe a handful of times. I think that it is a very different formula than what I was used to from Juvia's Place when I picked this up. And I love the old Juvia's Place formula. Now, this palette looks to me very, very unused. And it's just because I really didn't need to pick up this palette. Would venture to say that I don't even side eye Juvia's Place anymore today. And I don't know why, I've just kind of fallen out of love with the products from the, the eye products specifically from the brand. So I would say that I probably wouldn't pick this up today. Last but not least is the palette that seemingly will never die in my collection. And that is the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself palette. It's so funny to me that this is such a palette, palette in my collection that it just get, keeps getting pulled into different things. Last year, I spent the entire year trying to like see what kind of damage I could do in panning this palette and this is where we ended up. We have a giant pan in the middle shade and we have two pans here and then recently through deck of panning, which this might be a spoiler, I was trying to put a pan into this shadow and I don't know if you guys can see but we did hit pan in that shadow. So really super excited to have this palette with four different pans in it, but this is a palette that has one matte, which is this one here, and the rest are shimmers, and this middle shade here is a highlight, and it is pretty chalky, and I mean, it's pretty, but it's very chalky, and doesn't look good on my skin. It exacerbates texture, so I just don't I use it for fingernail polish, which is why the big old pan exists. Now, the shimmers in this palette are really quite nice, actually. They're really, really pretty on the eyes. They're a little bit more thick and opaque, um, but they don't really exacerbate texture or, you know, cause texture to be there that didn't exist before. This is all shimmer. It's one matte and all shimmer. I think for this one, I got sucked into the packaging and how odd and eccentric it was, but these days I don't love odd and eccentric palettes to be honest and this is beautiful it's a beautiful palette but it's also i mean and i prefer more mattes in a palette than i do shimmers in a palette if it's more than a 50 50 range as far a uh, 50 50 ratio as far as mattes to shimmers in a palette i typically will side eye it um in the negative way like i don't need this palette and this is why this is mostly, I mean, it's 99% shimmer. So I know for a fact I would not pick up this palette today if it was one that launched today. So with that said, we've been through all of the palettes that were pulled for me and it's exactly 50-50. So five of these palettes I would repurchase today and five of them I would not repurchase today. And I think I shocked myself with the Natasha Denona one. But when I think through the lens of whether I love this palette or not, I think this palette ended up like in my ranking Natasha Denona. This palette always ends up at the bottom of the ranking for me because it's just not a favorite palette of mine. That's the only surprise I think in this stack of wouldn't repurchase. And in this stack of would repurchase, I don't really think I'm surprised at all. And it's funny because when you look <laughs> When you look at the stack of wood repurchase, four out of the five of them are so colorful. And for me, for a minute, I've been thinking, like, I'm wearing a lot of neutrals these days. Like, am I turning into a neutral girly? This tells me that that's not exactly the case. It's just what works for me for the moment. Um, Only one of them is a neutral eyeshadow palette or a appropriate, a everyday wear, quote unquote, 
uh, palette. With that said, let me know what your guys' thoughts would be on the 10 palettes that I pulled into this. I would be interested to hear your thoughts. I also have a palette roulette a review on every single one of these palettes, so I will put my um, palette roulette playlist in the cards for you so that you guys can go and find the reviews that you want to see on these palettes if you want to see any. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I would I would definitely be interested in hearing everything that you had to say down in the comment section. So again, don't forget to hit a girl up. With that said, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you and yours are well. I hope that you are all safe and healthy and getting along as best you can. I hope that you are all loving each other so dang much, being so super kind to everybody that you see. It doesn't cost us anything to be kind. And with that said, bye guys. <laughs>